Hello! In the following, I would like to give you an introduction to the PCT, the Patent Cooperation Treaty. First of all, I would like to discuss with you what options are available to applicants who would like to seek international patent protection. Then I would like to explain in more detail what the PCT is all about, why you would wish to consider using the PCT and what are the advantages of the PCT. And at the end, I would like to cover and outline some of the main procedural steps in the PCT system. Now, if you're interested in the PCT and in international patent protection, you probably have either made an invention yourself or you know of someone who has made an invention and you are interested in finding out how to best go about protecting it. Now, you could simply start out with filing a national patent application and trying to obtain a national patent. Now, would that be good enough? I suppose it depends if you're really only interested in protecting your invention in a particular country, then filing a national patent protection might be sufficient. However, if you're also interested in protecting that invention in other countries, you need to consider filing for patent protection also in those other countries and the problem of obtaining international patent protection comes up. Now why do you need protection in multiple countries? Well that's essentially because of the principle of territoriality which applies in the international patent system. And this principle means that if you obtain a patent in one country or in a particular territory, you're really only protected in that one country. If you need to be protected in other territories or countries, you need to also get patents for those countries and territories. So if you take an example, if you have a US patent and someone is infringing your US patent, you're protected against such infringers in the United States of America. So you can either stop them or ask for compensation for whatever uh, acts they have been taken. However, you would not necessarily be protected against infringing acts taken in other countries, in Europe, in Japan, in China. If you also want to be protected against such acts in those countries, you need to obtain a patent in Europe, in Japan, in China, as the case may be. So as a result, if your business tends to be more global, if you're interested also in foreign markets, you really need to consider obtaining international patent protection or patent protection in multiple countries. So there are really two main options available to applicants out there to obtain international patent protection. You can either file for protection under the Paris Convention, an international treaty established in 1883, or through the PCT, the Patent Corporation Treaty. Let's first take a look at the option going through the Paris Convention. And how does the Paris Convention really work? Well, the Paris Convention, this international treaty, basically sets up a system where a national of one of the member states of the Paris Convention can file a first or initial patent application in one of the member states of the Paris Convention. And then he or she has the right to follow up with further applications, subsequent applications, if he files those applica subsequent applications not later than 12 months from the filing date of the initial application. If he files before the expiration of 12 months, he can do what we call claim priority of the earlier filed application. And this is contained in Article 4 of the Paris Convention. This claiming priority of an earlier application has the effect that for prior art purposes, the subsequently filed applications will be treated as if they had already been filed on the same day the initial application was submitted. Now the PCT really builds on the Paris Convention and also contains the right to claim priority 
just as in Article 4 of the Paris Convention. But it expands things further and I'll explain that to you in more detail in a moment. Do keep in mind, however, that even if we tend to think that filing under the PCT system is probably the better option for you in the majority of cases, there are some scenarios where filing under the Paris Convention really still is something you need to seriously consider. One case that I have in mind here is if you need protection in a non-PCT contracting state. So if a country has not yet joined the PCT, but you still would like protection in that particular country, you need to go through the Paris Convention. Or if you are an applicant who really only needs protection in two, three countries, and you're very certain about this, and you're not going to change your mind at any later stage in the process, then maybe filing through the Paris Convention in those three countries might be the better option or at least a more economic option to you than going through the PCT. So what, what is the PCT? The PCT is also an international treaty which was concluded and signed by states in June 1970 in a conference in Washington DC. It became operational eight years later in June 1978 with a mere 18 contracting states at the time. The PCT is really a procedural treaty that facilitates the obtaining of patents internationally. The way it works, rather than filing multiple applications, you file a single PCT application, which has the same effect as filing a national application for all of the contracting states of the PCT at the same time. Do keep in mind, however, that the ultimate decision whether a patent can or cannot be granted remains with the national offices that we call the designated offices. Those are the offices which you designate when you file your international application. And they ultimately will decide whether a patent can or cannot be granted on your claimed invention. The PCT really has grown enormously over the years. As far as the contracting states are concerned, as I said, it started out with only 18 contracting states and now we have more than 145 contracting states all over the world. Also, the number of applications. In 1978, there were only 636 applications filed at the time and in 2012, we had more than 190,000 PCT applications filed, so really a clear example of exceptional growth that you can see in the PCT system. So why all of this success or what are the real advantages of the PCT in particular over the Paris Convention? One of the elements of this I would think is simplification. By filing one single application you have the legal effect of having filed multiple applications on the same day in all or for all of the contracting states of the PCT. And when you file a PCT application, you only need to comply with one set of formality requirements, not multiple formality requirements. This even applies later on before the national offices where you continue with your application until patent grant. They need to apply the same set of formality requirements that apply under the PCT and they cannot ask you to comply with different or additional formality requirements than those under the PCT. If you use the PCT, you're able to postpone major costs associated with international patent protection until a later stage. The major costs really are translation costs, national filing fees and fees that you need to pay to an agent to help you prosecute your application. These costs under the Paris Convention you would really already have to come up with them before the expiration of 12 months when you have to file your multiple national applications as I explained earlier. Under the PCT these costs are postponed for an additional 18 months until 30 months from the filing date of your initial application. Only at that stage would you have 
to come up with those additional fees and pay those additional fees and uh, bear those costs. The PCT also provides you with a strong basis for your future patenting decisions by providing the applicant with important reports, for instance the international search report and the written opinion which are established by an authority called the International Searching Authority and which are made available to the applicant in the process of the international application. Optionally, applicants can also ask for what we call a supplementary search report, which is a secondary search done by a different searching authority or by something called international preliminary examination, which would lead to a report from an international preliminary examining authority or IPA, which gives the applicant essentially another opportunity to amend his or her application and to come to maybe a more positive final report before going to the national offices than the report that was issued by the International Searching Authority that was the, searching, uh, the search report and the written opinion of the ISA. One real critical advantage of the PCT that I haven't mentioned yet is that the PCT really buys you additional time. I already mentioned that the costs are postponed, but you really also gain additional time, additional 18 months in comparison to the Paris Convention, before you really need to take the decision if you want to continue with your application before the national offices and before which offices you would like to continue in the national phase before those national offices. And this additional time is extremely valuable to applicants because they can do further research on their inventions, they can check the markets, they can evaluate the opportunities for their inventions and see if and where they really need patent protection at the end of the day. And do keep in mind that the initial decision that you took when you filed your PCT application that you needed patent protection in 10 countries, for instance, that decision can change. It can go either way. Either you come to the conclusion, this is really a great invention. I need patent protection in even more countries. And that's absolutely doable under the PCT. Or you restrict your initial decision. Instead of 10 countries, I only need protection in five countries. And you can do that before even you have paid the translation fees, before you have paid your local attorneys and your national filing fees. So this is really the crucial advantage of the PCT over the Paris Convention. So now I would like to talk about some of the main procedural steps in the PCT system. And first of all, I would like to explain that there are two phases in the life cycle of an international application. We talk about the international phase followed by the national phase. The international phase really is about the filing of the international application, international search and the written opinion established by the International Searching Authority or ISA international publication and the optional international preliminary examination. This is a streamlined procedure which all international applications go through except for international preliminary examination which is optional and then this is followed by the national phase. Here the applicant needs to decide before which offices do I wish to continue and he will then take his application to those offices where he wants to continue. He needs to furnish a translation, pay national fees in this case, and then continues before some of the offices which he originally specified in his international application. So typically what happens is an applicant will start out with filing a national application. And then before the expiration of 12 months, he will follow this up with the filing of an international or PCT application, claiming priority of that earlier application under Article 4 of the Paris Convention, as I explained earlier. He files his application with an office that we call the PCT Receiving Office. Those are usually national offices, but in their function under the PCT as a PCT Receiving Office. 
The receiving office will do a formality check on your application and they will send a copy of your application to the International Searching Authority so they can commence with the international search and they will send a copy to the International Bureau here in Geneva, Switzerland. We will do a second formality check on all of those applications and we will get back to the receiving offices if we notice something that they haven't seen so they can go back to the applicant so the issue can be resolved during the international phase of the PCT procedure. We will also then prepare those applications for international publication which takes place promptly after 18 months from the initial filing date of your first filed application or which you claim priority. And then you have the two optional procedures, supplementary international search, the applicant so wishes, or international preliminary examination, again an optional procedure. At 30 months, the applicant needs to decide whether and where he wants to enter the national phase. And then the national phase commences and the national processing of the application with at the end, hopefully, the decision that a patent can be granted on your claimed invention. So I hope I was able to show you in this short presentation that the PCT buys you valuable time and provides you with relevant information to allow you to take informed decisions about whether and where to obtain international protection for your claimed invention. I discussed some of the main advantages of the PCT, in particular in comparison to filings under the Paris Convention, and I gave you a brief overview over the main procedural steps in an international application. If you want to know more about the PCT system and how it works and functions in practice, please feel free to contact us and you will find all the contact information on our internet site.